Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. That's the day, and welcome to the Ruthless Press Conference. We have the dynamic cast here, so before going any further, I'll allow them to introduce themselves and their roles really quickly. I can say, uh, Melissa, get Sorry. us rocking. Hi, hey, hi, you guys. Sorry, um, I am Melissa L. Williams. I play Ruth on Ruthless. Ooh, ooh, Two. Ruth. Get them, Matt. Let's do it. Let's do. Let's do the order in the let's cast. Let's do, do it. Order. Go. Go ahead. Submit. Yeah, it's kind of cutting up on me, but uh, introduction. How's it going? I'm Matt Sedanian. and I'm playing the highest, or ruthless. Oh. What's up, everybody? I'm Lenny Thomas. I play Daikon on Ruthless. Hello, everyone. My name is Bajelin Autumns, and I am the Supreme Elder Mother Marvel. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I am Blue Kimball, and I have the honor of playing Andrew on Ruthless. Boom, boom. Perfect. Well, thanks again, everyone. And just to quickly note, um, this will be 30 minutes long, so please remain on mute and have your cameras off until called upon. Um, if you have been sending your questions, that's great, but please just directly message them to me. <laughs> you don't have to put them in the public chat. Um, and we will call on you one by one. And let's start with Gerard Horton with blacktruth.net. You guys hear me? Yes. You guys see me? Mm-hmm. Yes. Hey, congratulations on season three, <clears throat> excuse me, for the Ruthless. I wanted to know when you guys got the role, and this could be directed to everyone or to anyone who want to answer, did the expectations you had for the role and for the series and going into season re- season three, did, has it met your expectations or has it exceeded your expectations for what you guys have thought of when you got the role and you look at the script and your character that you thought the series and your roles and your characters have developed to that point going into season three? Mm, nice mm-hmm. question. That's a great well, question. I that for myself, for sure. Um, I could say that it's exceeded expectations, particularly from uh, the moment that we, like the first season, I think for all of us, it was fairly fast into Mm -hmm. the start of production. So there wasn't really a lot of time to digest and think. Um, And when I first started it, for me, it was just insanely different than when I originally had envisioned it. Uh, Because only a couple of days before we went there that that I learned that I had the wig so then to put on the wig and the process of putting on the wig and the first season was an experiment. So it was like, you know, it was like having an extreme case of what I would think not being able to move your face from Botox would be like. <laughs> <laughs> All aspects of it felt surreal and I didn't think it was gonna, that it was gonna last. It just felt like strange. But now, um, particularly after Tyler made some tweaks in season one uh, and we reshot that, it's like, it's gone to another level of where I, I, I thought possible. So it's been, really uh, uh, gratifying for me. Oh. I agree, when I got the scripts, I was, first of all, it was such a blessing to uh, be a part of this show because it's not like any other Tyler Perry show. It's mm. one of a kind, it's out of the box and and we're actually, we're the only show that's like this on TV right now. So it's yeah. exciting to be a part of something pioneering in this way. Um, talking about a subject that's so taboo and swept under the rug and not not a lot of people like to tackle the everyday horror that is a cult and mm-hmm. I was proud to be a part of such a complex um, circumstance and it definitely exceeded my expectations for sure and continues to continues to so I'm excited yeah. for you guys to see what we got yeah. Yeah. And for me, um, the first season was really, really, really uh, chaotic for me because when I got the first script and all I got at that time was one script, I said, oh, this is going to be a breeze. I can breeze right through this. And then the, the next hundred start pouring in. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. When I got there, <laughs> Melissa would tell you, I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. But then right. after, after getting in camp, meeting with the cast, seeing how cool and respectful they were, I said, I can do this. I can mm-hmm. do it, baby. In, in the second season, uh, same thing, but a little better. 
And then, then the third season was like, oh, just like the first, I got this. <laughs> Back me. Great. Well, I once again want to applaud you guys. Look forward for this season and many more to come. Um, thanks again for answering the questions. You guys are wonderful. Um, checking in for blacktruth.net and um, blessings to you guys. So, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Next, we'll go to Jermaine with When We Speak. Hey, hey everybody. Can you, can you see me? Yeah, yes. we see you here. Oh, well, my name is Jermaine saying of When We Speak TV. Um, at the beginning of Ruthless season one, I would believe that um, you had to, to get acquainted with your character and get familiar with your character. Now that you're in season three, I would like to know how can you share with me a moment where you realized that you were no longer portraying the character, but that you had become that character? Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Uh, <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yeah. Which, so all right after we wrapped season three <clears throat> a, a few of us went out to a club i'm not going to say which one or what type but we had a press photo shoot uh, of sorts to do the next day like the next morning and it was already what midnight one in the morning and Matt and melissa were leaving and they were like lenny let's get out of here let's let's go I'm like, no, no, I'm good. I'm gonna be straight. I'm gonna be straight. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm, Daikon's a hot mess. If I show up a hot mess, I'm fine. Then, and Melissa was like, oh my God, you are Daikon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when it clicked. I was like, oh well, snap, maybe I, yes, maybe, I am. Maybe I'm his. <laughs> that was, that was the first moment for me. Yeah, man. But no, <laughs> like, like, like everybody said, you know, and on the previous question, coming into season one, uh, I feel like everybody didn't really know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? We got the scripts and you try to internalize the characters or whatever and make them do what they do. But then when you get there, and like I said, you want to make Tyler proud. You want to make Tyler Perry proud. You know, you got the, the anxiety mm -hmm. of what's going to happen. And like I said, meeting everybody and having to bond quickly and shooting all the scenes even quicker, you know, because it was, you gotta be able to hit the ground running with TP. Yeah. He, he moves and cuts fast. So you just wanted that um, confirmation that you're doing the characters right and you're doing things justice for what uh, TP wants. But after the first season, first day, second days of shooting, he lets you know and it's confirmed that yeah, you are killing it and you're doing mm -hmm. it right. And after that, the total confidence is there. You embody the character. The character becomes you. So then when season two rolls around, you can just fall right back into it. I am Andrew now. He is Don. Mm -hmm. He is Ruth Lissa. When Matt puts that, he puts that wig on, <laughs> he becomes the highest. It's, it's innate. So I'm not going to say that it's easy for us. You know, I'm not going to say that and speak it because we put a lot of hard work into this and whatnot. But I know it's not the same type of feel that it was for season one. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We look forward to <laughs> getting back in front of our family and going to the compound and putting on those purple robes and, and, and <laughs> getting the drama back on our hands so yeah well well um well thank you guys so much for speaking with me um and i can't wait to speak with you again soon thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again all right perfect next we'll have we empower all i wear is purple now you know <laughs> I only wear purple Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Congratulations on season three. So I kind of have a real general question because this show gets better and better each season. So what can we expect to be a little bit different in your characters this season? Mm. I don't know. Monster's still nasty, so I don't I can't <laughs> I can't speak for everyone else, but she's still a hot mess. Oh Marvel. I, I think Ruth, um, because in the first two seasons, it was like, she was just trying to figure out her place and how much she could walk on the wild side. 
And I think with this new title of the highest to be, she has discovered that there is a power in that title. And mm. so I think you'll get to see more of her mastermind side come out maybe from her past. This was something that was a little bit dormant because she wasn't mm. able to be in control, but now she's able to do this here in the compound. And it's like, girl, are you trying to get out? Or are you having fun? <laughs> Hmm. Which one are you doing? I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> That's true mm -hmm. for myself and my character, the highest, um, you know, in order to, to, to maintain the order of my flock, uh, I have to employ certain ah. strategies and tactics. And uh, yeah. um, <laughs> I have to shift. What happened? <laughs> flock. <laughs> You like frozen. The flock. You called us the flock, and she loves it. Yeah, it's, it's, that's perfect. Yeah, you guys are my flock. Yeah, I'm just, I'm flock. yeah. My flock. yeah. Okay, I well, I'm up. super excited. Um, oh, you you have a, you still want you want to answer too? Absolutely. Blue? Okay. Go for it, Blue. What? What's that? Oh, just your your answer to the question. Oh, 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 the characters, the, every, everybody's dynamic is jumping around in season three. Like, like uh, Melissa said for Ruth, she's coming into power. Lenny, what, what do you speak on you? For Andrew, he's losing himself. I'm getting lost within, in the cult, drinking the highest juice. I'm mm -hmm. not, I've become part of the flock. Like he said, I'm flocked out. I'm Waka Flocka. <laughs> um, so, I'm Waka Flocka. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for me to remember my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is to save everybody. My ultimate goal is I'm a fed. I'm undercover. I'm there to save those kids, uh, those kids, those children. But in order for me to keep my um, self undercover, the highest is going to push me to do some things that are crossing the line. I'm a, I'm too deep undercover now, deep mm. undercover, and I might not be able to. Um, Swim back out. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm on the water, highest. <laughs> I, I, I'm treading water, boss. I'm, I'm, I'm... Well, I'm super excited to, to, you know, to check out season three, and I wish you all the best, and I hope you all get a season four out of this one as well. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, Dr. Pam. Thank you thank so you. much, Dr. Thank Pam. You. Thank you. Blue, what did you all say? Right. We will. We will. <laughs> So Next really, up, we have Media so Village. Who has a hunch? And the flock. The yeah. flock. He said it so, so nonchalantly that yeah. it's like funny as hell when he said it. Not my flock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought I froze and I missed something. I was no, like, no. That's it, was, it was just it's funny. Just, it was funny. She <laughs> lost it. Hi. <laughs> Matt was like, you know, my flock. My flock. <laughs> have to leave my flock. Did you see him <laughs> put the hand gesture? My flock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next up, we have Media <laughs> Village. The question that, that it has merged. Um, <laughs> my highest, bro. Officially become. Oh. He, he, put, he only puts man fresh pressed mango juice in his hair. He's, <laughs> he's the highest. Yeah. <laughs> Was anybody in the scene this year where they had said that it was a wig? Was anybody in that scene? All right, that's mine. Was that your? Was it said? Did he? Did he have oh, it? definitely. He oh, he <laughs> definitely said it. I don't know if he's going to, you know, if it's going <laughs> to wrap it. Oh, but it's definitely Matt, said. Matt, right. we're about the world to doesn't know about roll to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, can you hear Robert? We're going to roll to the next <laughs> one. Okay. Matt, Matt, that's me and the sheriff. <laughs> sheriff. Media Village, you're up next. Me and the right. sheriff. Sheriff says that. Yeah. Hi, hola, everyone from New York. How's everyone? Hola. Doing? Hey, how are you? Great, thank you. Hey. Uh, thank you all for taking the time today. Uh, again, congrats, as everyone has said, on season three. Uh, lots of shows don't make it that far these days anymore, so it's a, a very wow. big deal. Um, for all of you, uh, is there a storyline that we haven't seen yet for your characters that you hope gets explored in future seasons? Of course, the yeah. origin story. You know what I mean? I don't think it's gonna be. I mean, because this this takes place so far. It's only been like maybe two weeks since the whole season started. Because there's is a there's too much going on. But like a lot of the fans and and a lot of us as well, we want to see where we all came from. 
how do you know? I mean, the, the, when the highest and, and uh, Daikon were in jail, when when Andrew was first put on the case, where Melissa was when she was wilding out, or Ruth was when she was wilding out, being a madam and whatnot, you know, where Baja was when she was a nurse, nice. you know what I mean? I, you know, everyone who's in the cult, how they even got to that spot, that would be dope, you know. Then he just wants another TV show. He's getting greedy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting greedy. I'm getting greedy. Yeah. My bad. Whole season of origin. Come on. <laughs> ruthless, ruthless origins. Let's go. <laughs> that would be dope. <laughs> That's kind of what I was thinking too. Like we need a we need a season where we show everybody's backstory and mm -hmm. what emotional state took them to Compound. be driven. Like, how do you do this? How'd you get there? Wow. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Putting it out there. Yep. We need to get it out there. Same I, here. I back it because, you know, it, I think it's really interesting, and the world would find it very interesting just psychologically how you can develop that mindset in order to control a large body of people. Like, mm -hmm. where does that happen? Is it click? Is it a vision that he sees? And then he aligns with Daikon and they, they make it happen. I mean, there's some expository dialogue i think right in season one where it says that we would stand on street corners and preach the word and then you kind of slowly develop people that are believers and i don't know that whole concept of of cult mentality is extremely intriguing to me because shit happens yeah. for real yeah. Yeah. and that spoke on in the script as well you know what led you know it said what led you to come here what leads people to believe this bullshit you know <laughs> excuse my french but <laughs> And that's what it said. And Andrew says that he was like, people just want to escape the actual real bullshit that is their life and what they go through, the struggles. So it's easy to follow a false prophet, the highest, and have him speaking things into you that feel right. And you get enough of people speaking that into you. Yeah, you will follow them. And that's how people end up in these false situations. And now they can't escape and they stuck in a cult. And doing drugs mm -hmm. and, getting and, each and getting slapped around by Daikon. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. All right, Yellow, thank you so much again. Congrats on the third season. And um, uh, yeah, whoever's next. <laughs> thank, thank, awesome. you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get any from NYC? Say again? Like next yeah. we have, oh. <laughs> next we have <laughs> So Unique Magazine. <laughs> Yeah, you're a New York shout out, Lenny, and you didn't even accept it. I heard it. I think I didn't think I can't caught it. There's just there's way too many distractions happening right now. Everyone's <laughs> trying to come to my house. Like, I'm good. Hey, you don't went Hollywood and you don't even accept New York shout outs no oh more. My <laughs> New York all day though. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hi, how you guys doing? Hi. I'm Tamara Rollins of So Unique Magazine. And since everybody is shouting out their location, I'm from the suburbs of Philadelphia. So hey. Oh, hey. Shout out to Philly. Hey. I'll let the ball. Really? Congratulations <laughs> on this season. Um, I wanted to say that the casting directors did a fantastic job of, you know, choosing you guys. Nice. And I just wanted to know, was there anything about you guys, that you, about playing the roles that you guys found personally challenging? Like, did it ever come, like, did you get to any scenes that you found, like, you know, kind of difficult to do or challenging? Mm. Season one, season two, and season three. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing, the whole thing. Whole thing. Having yeah. fifty plus pages of dialogue to memorize and then do on camera. That I, you know, by the grace of God, I don't know how we do it. I really don't. You know what I mean? Um, you do as much work as you can to prep, to prepare for it, have your intentions down, have, you know, the work done so that when the, the inevitable happens, you're not panicking, you can stay in the moment. But, oh man, there's no, I mean, all right, the end of season two, the way it ends, it was supposed to go another way. I'm not going to say exactly how, but you saw how, you saw what happened to Daikon, right? Go into that space where you're begging for your life. That's pretty hard to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. to, to, to do it convincingly, believably, because if I don't believe it, I'm not going to be able to do it. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, but then again, my cast is so freaking dope. It's easy, it's, it's easy to get into that mindset because I'm serving them. And if I got them to serve, 
I can't be stopped. That's it. You know what I mean? That's just how I feel. Mm, beautiful. But, like you said, it's um, the, 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 the task that we uh, were blessed with is a challenge within itself. Um, it's a challenging, it's a challenging script. It's a ca uh, challenging uh, dynamic. You know, you're in a, a, a cult that's uh, sex trafficking kids and women and, 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 yeah. and murder. So <laughs> a lot of the scenes or have that dynamic where you say you got to face challenges. But like I said, TP, uh, Tyler Perry has the confidence in us as actors to be able to, you know, push the envelope of these messages, these hard scenes. So like I said, it all it is all challenging, right? We would agree, but yeah, it also gives us actor uh, right. privilege and justification and range to be able to go in and tap into these darkness these levels you know just to pull and entice the crowd and the fans and and we, we were grateful for that oh yeah yeah i think like all act well i studied where you're you cannot judge any character that you're about to play i yes. mean especially if you want to love what you're doing right because i feel like even though we are tackling such a, a serious subject matter when there's a break in the day or their cameras are off, like we're all so in our element of like the family and family vibe that we have as a cast that you feel supported in dealing with such a serious subject. You know, you feel like you're not the only one dealing with it because everybody's in the trenches with you as a cast. Um, I don't know if I think the only thing I can offer to any character on Ruthless is empathy because I know that this is real, you know? So, yeah, that's my Yeah, uh, the thing with um, going into your character, it's like um, a lot of the stuff that we're doing is actually snatched from the headlines. It's still going on today. And yeah. you gotta bring that in there with you and trying to keep your sanity. And sometimes some of those scenes for Marva is hard to watch. They're really hard to watch, but you have to stay in where you in your character. You have to stay what you brought in in to mm -hmm. make it believable, not only to your the audience but yourself. Yes, because sir. if you're not believing what you're doing, you're going to stand there like a deer and caught in the headlights, and it's going to look stupid. <laughs> and so <laughs> you don't want to look stupid, so you just say, "Okay, this is where she is today. This is what she has to do." These are her words. These are the actors she's working with. Give it everything you have. And that's what I do. I give it all I have. Yeah. You're doing it, baby. You give it to us, Queen Baja. Oh <laughs> yes. so, well, <laughs> but yeah, we go dark. Like I said, we, we, we as actors and, and this show, we, we do a lot of things where you tap in and you go dark. But like Miss um, Queen Melissa Roof said, our energy and our love that we have as a cast for each other you know, as soon as you go dark and it's cut, she's there to pull me right back out. I'm there to pull me right, right back. Exactly. To come back to, you know, this happiness, this good energy, the roof <laughs> energy. But that as an actor, you have to be able to tap into those things. And we do that. And then we can do that safely because I know everybody here has my back and they know that I got theirs. And like I said, our energy bounces off of each other. And of course, Tyler Perry, he has our back as well. Right. He wouldn't make us do something or, or send us to the dark place without, you know, having concern for us. So it's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you guys. And thank you so very much. I have a good one. Shout out thank to you. Thank, thank you for having us. Wait, was he, was he about to say something? Because I didn't want to miss that. Shout out to Philly. Shout out to Philly. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Later. Bye. Next. Oh, next, we'll go to life and entertainment. Y'all trying to get me in trouble. Y'all always getting me in trouble. <laughs> oh, it's us. Um, hey. Thank you all so much for allowing <laughs> me to be on this beautiful conference. I'm Gina Hills of Life and Entertainment. You. you guys do an amazing job, first of all. Thank you for your characters. Thank you for going deep into those roles. Season three of Ruthless has become more intense with each character being pushed to their limit, going deeper into the cult-like mindset. As an actor, how do you decompress from portraying intense roles to maintain your own self-identity on your own time? Get <laughs> the first few days after we wrap, 
Sorry, you go ahead. Go ahead, Melissa. No, I was saying, Lenny, that's you all day. You can that's me all day. First few days after we wrap. I mean, the past two seasons now, people come and decompress at my spot. And because I'm I'm one of the only members uh, of the cast who lives here uh in Atlanta. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, hop stepping a jump away from Tyler Perry Studios where we shoot everything. And um, you know, we we, we uh we get a little little party on here and there, you know what I mean? Everyone decompresses at at my spot. It's like a it's like a giant nest, right? And I'm I am what you call it, my beautiful mother's son i am the male version of her and she was big mama on the block so i'm doing that with my cast here and uh i like to think that before they head back to their lives in la or wherever they're coming from that they can they can come here and just just stare at the wall if that's what they want to do but um we we, we party a little a little hard a little bit <laughs> <laughs> like Liddy said yeah man because we we shoot so much and we shoot so fast and so many different dynamics you gotta say that as an actor it's an emotional roller coaster and when you're done you're mentally physically spiritually drained yeah. you know, from crying one second to laughing to running to murdering to killing <laughs> to having sex you do you understand mm -hmm. you, you know, this is your emotions all day while you're on camera doing that and when you have to make it real and believable for Tyler Perry and then for the audience, it takes a lot out of you. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing that for two, three weeks straight, 10 to 20 hours a day, it's wearing. So mm -hmm. at the end, yeah, you need a release and you need to find your foundations and back to the reality. And like I said, Lenny is the man for making sure that everyone, when they come to Atlanta, we can go to his house and relax, have a drink, talk, laugh, bond. Mm -hmm. uh, when season three aired, we all watched it together. Yeah. Yes, we did. <laughs> family, as a ruthless family. And then you get to just see and bond and, and, and watch the magic that we did together. So, you know, those are the type of things that keeps us grounded and, and, and a family and loving yeah. as a cast. Amen. Best cast, best cast ever, best best cast I've ever been a part of. I don't know. Hands down. Thank you so much for answering the question, you guys. I pray you so many blessings in abundance. Have a great day. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Gina. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we'll go to Radio. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> Radio to Atlanta. That's oh. You coming next time, Baja. Let's get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hey. Hi. I'm Straight Talk Daphne with Radio 2 Atlanta right here in the Buckhead, Atlanta, Georgia area. And I want to say congratulations on season three. Hey, that's a <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you much. Are oh, you right by me? I'm in Buckhead. I said Buckhead Listen. building. I don't get no invite to the party, but okay, we're going to move on. Let me fix that. Let me fix that. Let me fix that. <laughs> So I, I wanted to know, based on the character that you all play, with the influence that you guys have gained from being on Ruthless, what is your intention and how can you use your influence to impact communities that you guys are connected to? Mm. <laughs> That's, a question. That's a great question. You know, like, like any platform that you are ever so fortunate to receive, you could just try to use it to to better the cause that you that you believe in, you know. Mm -hmm. So whether it's physically being there, or trying to help garner attention for whatever cause that you're you're trying to promote, just kind of it assists in that. You could just raise more awareness. The bigger your platform gets, the more that you can you can help and assist in a variety of ways. Okay, thank you. For me, uh, I just discovered uh, the Instagram and the TikTok. <laughs> so I, whatever's out there, I put it out there and try to stay relevant because this is a youth world. This is a youth yeah. world. Um, you know, everything is about the youth. So you gotta, you gotta find something to keep their attention, and you gotta find someone to keep the old folks' attention. So I just try to to sit down and and, and I say, oh, I can do this. So I jump up and do it, and I feel good that I'm doing something because I get a lot of beautiful responses, a, a lot of negativity, but the beautiful responses is what keep me going and just love doing it. Cause you're beautiful, Baja, we love you. Right. <laughs> but no, um, 
Oh, go get him, Queen. I was just going to say, you know, I feel like it's still something that I'm learning to be able to balance um, because I feel like I'm very private. Uh, and so when social media, when all of the platforms from Instagram to Twitter, just to, can't keep up. Like um, for somebody uh, who, I'm like an introvert slash extrovert. So it's just like exactly. borderline, you know, <laughs> on, on my personality. But I do respect and appreciate when you do have something to say and we're blessed with a platform to do so. And it's like, helping push positivity or helping push inspiration or hope for other people. Um, but it's something I'm still learning, learning okay. myself. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's a blessing within itself. Like when you, uh, blessed to be able to do what we do. Um, of course, being an actor is a blessing, but it's also a privilege, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, we put the work in, but still, you still have to be chosen. There's so many people that, uh, strive to be able to do what we do and don't have the privilege. So we never take any of it for granted. And mm -hmm. that side of it is just another facet of the job that comes with it. You know, being able, you attain a platform and what you say, people listen to you and mm -hmm. have reach. So like she said, we have to find that balance of being able, you know, to handle it. Um, mm -hmm. And it, <laughs> it's evolving. It's it's ever <laughs> ever evolving. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, I I want to do more. Like and then just some of the things that are based on our our show, um, uh, people that have uh, have been um affected by cults and like right. I said, sex trafficking and women trafficking. Mm -hmm. and these things are problems that we are still apparent with. So I definitely want to get more outreach and more, you know, help and connection with that. Awesome. So, that is oh i could throw some some i'm i'm right there with uh melissa i'm still trying to figure out specific ways i can um i can give back but in the meantime like i have aspirations of uh producing my own projects right and putting people that i came up with in them and then you know essentially creating a tribe of people of the like mind who will do the same for themselves one day, you know what I mean? And as I'm doing this, be the light that I want to see. So that's what I'm doing for now. You know what I mean? Until I get more specific with, with how to. Um, awesome. Yeah, I'm obsessed with motivational speakers. So I see that in the future for me. You know what I mean? Great, definitely. Yeah. You motivate me, Lenny. I'm motivated. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for answering the question. All you guys do a great job and you are very believable. <laughs> Awesome. But thank, thank you. you. Congratulations again. Look forward thank to you. Thank you. Not out. Big thank shout you, out to ATL. ATL. Yes. <laughs> Buckhead. Buckhead. Yes. Okay, and now we'll go to Urban Bridges. What's up, you guys? Hey, hey, what's goody? Nothing Hello. much. Yeah. Aries here again. This question is for Matt. I got to ask you, as far as new viewers come and as far as the character, the highest, tell us who the highest is, what's his intentions, and then what's his end goal? Mm. Uh, boiled down to a very basic level and fundamental for the highest, he's seeking power. I mean, there's <clears throat> very few individuals that are just wired that way that you know, like if we were to somehow establish a baseline for what is considered normal thinking, mm -hmm. a few, and we're even experiencing it now with the war in Ukraine, there are certain leaders that are just wired to want to dominate and have power and control over people. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the highest. He wants his control. He wants his power. He wants to keep his vision in his community. Um, in line and conforming a certain way. So uh, he's driven by power, but conflicted by other things like now love and, you know, other feelings that he wasn't really planning on having, but um, yeah. power is the main, the main focus. Main vein. Mm. All right, thank you guys again to continue success. Big fan of the show. Thank you guys. Thanks, right. Aries. Coming back, Aries. Thank you. Perfect. Well. That will conclude today's press conference. I want to thank the cast. <laughs>
And also thank everybody for joining us today. Remember that Ruthless airs new episodes Thursdays on BET+. We make it. Later, y'all. Much love. Thank you for coming. We love you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks to get kicked up.